Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss what is BOD, biochemical oxygen demand, a very important parameter of environmental engineering. This video has been divided into three parts. First of all, we will understand the concept, what is BOD actually, it uh, literally means. Second, we will uh, discuss the BOD test, how it is determined in the laboratory. And third, we will be talking about first order equation or the kinetics. We will be using the help of animations and the graphics so that it will be very easier for you to understand. Let us look at the what BOD is. To understand what is BOD, I have taken an imaginary, uh, just uh, consider an imaginary scenario where there is a crystal clear water lake having a thriving aquatic life. The only pollution that can happen is because of the falling of leaves. What happens is with the time human population is developed nearby the area and as you know, people require water for various purposes like drinking, cleaning, uh, flushing of the toilets, etc. And once this water is used, this water comes out of the system through drains and it is released into the nearby sources. So, so for example, this water comes out and it is being released into the lake. Now there is something present in this uh, in, in the wastewater which is very problematic for us. Okay, it is going to create some trouble in the lakes. What is that parameter that is present in the in the wastewater that is going to cause the trouble? So that parameter is organic matter. If we understand what organic matter is, we will understand the effect of releasing of this wastewater into the lake. Plus will be very easy to understand what biochemical oxygen demand is. So let us first focus upon what organic matter actually is. So any compound that is made up of CHONS that is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur that is called as organic matter or in simple terms anything that is biodegradable in nature is called as organic matter. For example, this apple it degrades with time, it oxidizes with time or there are multiple examples of organic matter. For example, different fruits and vegetables, plant, leaves, log, tree logs, uh, the waste coming out of the industries like paper industry, sugar industry, etc. Uh, toilet waste dead bodies of plants and animals all these are made up of very complex organic compounds so when we look at these com uh, these organic materials these are made up of very complex organic compounds like carbohydrates proteins amino acids and pigments if there is a water sample which contains a mixture of these compounds okay how do we determine so if, 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 if the bottle is containing this, all these types of com complex compounds, how do you determine the amount of organic matter or amount of pollution in this water sample? It will be very complicated to perform so many tests to determine different types of different chemicals. So the quantification is very important, but it is very difficult directly. So we exploit a very important property of organic matter to determine its content. What is that property? So we know all the organic matter degrades with time just like this apple is getting degraded and when it is degraded what what do you mean by degradation there are microbes which are attached to it and what they are doing is they are eating this organic content what do i mean by eating they are oxidizing it and while they are eating this organic matter they are doing one more thing they are respiration they are doing respiration process simultaneously so what they are doing is they are consuming oxygen present in the atmosphere while they are eating the organic matter. So the microbes require oxygen simultaneously while they are all oxidizing the organic matter. So what will happen if this organic matter, organic matter waste is released into the lakes? If this organic matter waste is released into the lakes, what is going to happen? Microbes will st start coming uninvited. They don't require any invitation for you to send. They will come directly. They will sense that there is organic matter present into it. There is suitable temperature for them. And what will do is, what they will do is they will start consuming the organic matter. They will start degrading or oxidizing the organic matter. And in the process, they will start consuming the dissolved oxygen present in the water. If the dissolved oxygen concentration falls below 4 mg per liter. The dissolved oxygen concentration falls below 4 mg per liter. It will be very harmful for the aquatic life and the fishes etc will start dying. The foul smells will come and the lake will become septic. Now 
in order to avoid this condition it is very necessary first of all to quantify the amount of organic matter that is being released so that we can treat it or solve this problem so how do you determine the amount of organic matter present in this lake so for that we use this property it's considered two boxes okay so the uh, the, the yellow box is uh, telling us so this box the yellow material is uh, um, is is resembling the organic matter a closed airtight chamber is there there is oxygen that is present into it the o2 bubbles are representing the dissolved oxygen present in the water so what is going to happen uh, so uh, uh, consider for example as soon as organic matter is present microbes will come and they will start consuming the organic matter simultaneously they are also consuming the oxygen if if we talk about box 2 since the organic content is lesser as compared to the previous block the microbes will require or demand they will demand lesser amount of oxygen for the consumption of organic matter so if the pollutant is more the oxygen demanded was very high by the microbes if the pollutant was less the oxygen demanded by microbes was also less so we'll say what is biochemical oxygen demand it is nothing but the amount of oxygen required by microbes for biological decomposition of organic matter there is a term called as bio bio means anything that is that has life okay bio means anything that is life and what has life microbes have life so microbes are demanding oxygen for degradation of organic matter so if we know the amount of oxygen that is demanded by microbes we can also indirectly calculate the amount of organic matter present into it so by calculating the oxygen demand we are actually determining the amount of organic matter present in the water okay so if the organic matter is less the oxygen demanded by microbes will be less and hence bod will be less or we'll say the pollution level in the lake will be less if the organic matter that is being released is very high then the microbes will require more and more oxygen to oxidize this organic matter and hence bod will be more or we will say the pollution level will be more but how do you determine bod in a laboratory how do you determine how much polluted a river is or the river water is in the laboratories so what we do is we collect the sample of whose bod we want to calculate so if we want to calculate bod we collect the sample of the water what we do is we determine the initial dissolved oxygen present so do is representing dissolved oxygen so what we do is we determine the initial dissolved oxygen present in the water once we know that we close this bottle it is generally a 300 ml bod bottle which is made up of glass which, which we used as a standard and then we put this bottle into an incubator it is a device which maintains a constant temperature it maintains a constant temperature and what we do is we put this in into an incubator for a period of 5 days after 5 days we take out this bottle and we again measure the dissolved oxygen content which is which we are calling as dof final dissolved oxygen so in a period of 5 days how much amount of dissolved oxygen is consumed by microbes that is what we called as a bod bod is equals to do initial minus do final reading so initially dissolved oxygen would have been higher after 5 days since microbes have consumed the organic matter the concentration of dissolved oxygen might have reduced if you look closely there are two t's over here one t is a small t which represent time of the day how many how much time you have taken so small t is representing this time that is 5 days and capital t is representing the temperature at which the test is performed so these are the technical things that are mentioned while we represent that bod and it is representing represented like this so bod 5 at 20 degrees celsius we have calculated what is the importance of this time and temperature that we'll see later now the uh, the unit of bod is in mg per liter how much amount of organic matter or oxygen is demanded in liters of the water that is how we are represent the bod in mg per liter or in ppm now the question arises what will happen if the water sample is collected from a source which does not have initial dissolved oxygen if the initially dissolved oxygen is zero if the water is so much polluted that there is no oxygen while when you have collected the sample then how will you measure the difference so if the oxygen is zero in this uh, chamber then there will be no oxygen in this chamber also 
okay so how do you determine the bod level in that type of sample of uh, wastewater so what we do is we modify this test a little bit we take a small amount of volume some fraction of the sample from the source secondly we prepare artificial dilution water where we mix oxygen through aerators so a uh, tap water a distilled water is sample is used we put some oxygen into it and then we pour this volume into it into the rest of the bottle so v2 volume so the 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 rest of the bottle is filled with the dilution water because we have diluted the sample now this bottle has organic matter this bottle has oxygen present into it now what we'll do is we'll mix this uh, we'll mix this bottle thoroughly and then we'll uh, we'll measure the initial dissolved oxygen present into it we put the cap back we repeat the same process put this into an incubator at 20 degrees celsius for 5 days period and then again we measure the final dissolved oxygen okay so now uh, uh, since we have added artificial oxygen into it the bod equation will change a little bit what we have done is do initial minus do final will be same now since the complete uh, the complete total volume was not used that is why we are adding a dilution factor into it this v1 upon v1 plus v2 is called as the dilution factor which co which comes into consideration because complete bottle of uh, 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 bod bottle was not filled with the water sample now there is one more situation here in this in this situation what was the case in this in this situation the oxygen was not present the initial dissolved oxygen was zero that is why we added a dilution water what if there is a possibility that there is no suitable environmental or conditions chemical conditions for microbial mass to grow it is possible that in certain types of organic material or the waste that are coming out from industries does not have bacteria present into them so what we do is apart from apart from adding uh, oxygen we also add bacterial culture into it that is what, that is what we called as seeds so we add bacterial seeds into the water and we add certain nutrients into it that is why it is called as a seed water seeds means something that starts uh, that that will help in the growth of microbial mass so we add some bacterial culture and then we add and pour this water into the sample it's called a seed water now what we do is since it is a possibility that that seed water will also consume some um, certain amount of oxygen and we want to reduce that possibility so what we do is we determine dissolved oxygen present in seed water also and we call it as a seed water the sw the dissolved oxygen present in seed water initially is called as swi we can call it anything and then or it is also called as a blank sample okay it is also called as a blank sample now now we mix the bod bottle we measure dissolved oxygen present in this bottle also so this is the dissolved oxygen that is present in this bottle so we have two values we have two different bottles one is a bottle of the sample that is prepared another is the seed water that we have prepared so we measure dissolved oxygen of both these bottles again the same process the repeated we put these bottles into an incubator at 20 degrees celsius for 5 days period and after 5 days we measure oxygen consumed by both these bottles and we incorporate and subtract the oxygen that was consumed by seed water and again same dilution factor is used so this is how the process is done in case we are using the industrial waste water once we know the values of bod it is very easy and how it will help us so what are the what what is the importance of determining bod or a pollution level of a of a of a water source what what is the importance so if we know how much polluted a river is how much polluted a drain is it will help government authorities and uh, this, uh, government authorities pollution control boards to determine the level of pollution that is being released by industries by the municipalities from the cities how much pollution is coming through them if we want to charge or put some penalty onto them we can put that once we know how much uh, is the concentration of pollution that is coming out of the municipalities or the industries it will also help us in designing the capacity of treatment plants if the pollution level is less then the treatment plant will uh, uh, will be required of a less capacity but if the pollution is more the treatment capacity required will be very large okay so the design of so the, the treatment plants the it, it starts from 3 mld 3 million liters per day to 
इट गोज अप टू थाउजेंड एम एल डी ट्रीटमेंट प्लांट्स दैट आर अवेलेबल इन इंडिया ऑल्सो वंस द ट्रीटमेंट प्लांट्स आर डिजाइंड बी ओ डी वैल्यू ऑल्सो हेल्प्स एंड हेल्प अस इन डिटरमाइनिंग हाउ मच एफिशियंटली द ट्रीटमेंट प्लांट इज वर्किंग सो वी 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 कैन कैल वी कैन डिटरमाइन हाउ मच अमाउंट ऑफ बी ओ डी वॉज एंटरिंग द प्लांट टू हाउ मच बी ओ डी इज कमिंग आउट ऑफ द प्लांट सो दैट वी कैन डिटरमाइन वेदर प्लांट इज वर्किंग एट एट्टी परसेंट एफिशियंसी नाइन्टी परसेंट एफिशियंसी और वेदर इट इज नॉट वर्किंग एफिशियंटली सो इट विल हेल्प अस इन डिटरमाइनिंग हाउ द प्लांट इज वर्किंग ओके नाउ लेट अस सी Why five day BOD was taken and why twenty degree Celsius was selected? So you'll see um, uh, this is an imaginary scenario we have created. How the BOD is me- uh, how the organic matter is changing. The content of organic matter is changing in the water with time. So consider this is a BOD bottle. The first BOD bottle is there. In this BOD bottle, there is certain initial amount of oxygen that is present. There are certain amount of organic matter is present. There is microbial mass that is present. With time and with days. Microbes will start consuming the organic matter. Plus, they will also use the oxygen present in the bottle. You will see with the time in the third day itself, a majority of organic matter has been consumed. By fifth day, more than sixty percent of the organic matter is consumed. But you will see the rate with which organic matter is getting eaten or oxidized is getting reduced day by day. So, firstly, in the first day itself, a lot of organic matter was eaten, but as the day progresses it is not getting reduced to zero but certain amount of organic matter is, uh, on the 20th day and on the 40th day still certain amount of organic matter is left so you can understand this uh, in a very simple terms we can put it in in, a, in the form of a statement the rate at which organic matter is oxidized is directly proportional to the amount of organic matter left now this might sound a little bit technical we can put in, uh, you can understand it in a simple terms suppose you are very very hungry and a lot of uh, and and a plate of food is served to you which contains all of your favorite dishes all of your favorite dishes is served in this plate of the food you are very hungry you have not eaten anything from last two days the rate at which you will consume the food will be very high you will you will start eating at a very high rate we will start eating at a very um, in a very speed in in a in a high speed as the time progresses the food in the plate will start getting reduced plus your stomach is also getting filled so the rate at which you will be eating will be very less as compared to the initial rate so what happens is so what 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 we are saying is the rate at which organic matter is oxidized or the rate at which organic matter is consumed by the microbes is directly proportional to the amount of food left on the plate if the amount of the organic matter left so if the organic matter is very uh, uh, was it a very large quantity the rate at which microbes were consuming was very high since the organic matter left is less the rate at which microbes will eat it will also reduce we represent it through an equation like this dlt by dt is directly proportional to lt where dl is change in organic matter with time how the organic matter is getting reduced with time since it is getting reduced we are putting a negative sign over here it's a decreasing value plus lt is representing the amount of organic matter left at any time t so fifth day me uh, how much food is remaining after fifth day how much food is remaining after third day that is represented by lt if the larger food is remaining the rate will be very high if the lower uh, smaller amount of food is remaining the rate at which it will be consumed will be less so it depends upon this and when we solve this equation uh, okay when we simplify this equation this equation comes out where it is very easy for us to calculate amount of food left after any time t so this lt is representing food remaining unoxidized after any time t how much food is remaining in the bottle how much amount of organic matter is left l not is the initial amount of organic matter t represents the time at which you want to determine and kt represents the rate at which microbes are eating the food their speed the rate at which they are consuming and the capital t is representing the temperature will come at kt value later first of all let us understand what l not and lt over here is l not is representing suppose the initial amount of organic matter was 100 grams Yeah, we're hundred mg per liter. So L not is representing hundred mg per liter, and L T is representing after five days. For example, if uh, it, suppose after five days only thirty mg per liter of food is remaining, so L L T is representing thirty mg per liter, 
एल नॉट इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग इनिशियल हंड्रेड एम जी पॉलीटर एंड टी इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग टाइम इफ यू चेंज द वैल्यू ऑफ टाइम टू ट्वेंटी एथ डे विल बी एबल टू डिटरमाइन हाउ मच अमाउंट ऑफ एल टी और फूड इज रिमेनिंग दैट इज द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस इक्वेशन वी कैन प्लॉट दीज वैल्यूज ऑल्सो ऑन अ ग्राफ सो आई हैव पुट टेकन सर्टेन सर्टेन वैल्यूज एंड आई हैव ट्राई टू प्लॉट दिस ग्राफ एट टाइम दिस इज द ग्राफ ऑफ टाइम वर्सेज बी ओडी रिमेनिंग अनऑक्सीडाइज and how much amount of bod is remaining so this is the, this is the graph that we get this is the l not value l not represents the initial amount of food that was present with time the food is getting reduced with time the food is getting reduced so at certain amount of time t only this much amount of food is remaining so at a, at, at a particular any time t you can determine how much amount of food is left okay with the help of this equation this represents lt represent the amount of food left whereas yt represents amount of food already been consumed so out of l not out of l not lt represents the amount of food remaining and this part represents kitna how much food has already been oxidized by the microbial mass okay so if we look at the values closer if we take a uh, so i, I have tried uh, Uh, i have put some efforts to determine the table i have taken l not value is to uh, as 100 100 mg per liter so an imaginary value i have taken it can be 200 mg per liter it can be 2000 mg per liter so i have considered the initial uh, organic matter value as to be 100 mg per liter and i am seeing how it is getting reduced plus i have taken kt value kt value at 0.23 per day with those values i have tried to calculate how with time the lt value is getting changed so okay so l not is 100 mg per liter kt i have taken as 0.23 per day which is a standard value at 20 degree celsius and i am changing the values of the time how with time the lt values are changing you can look uh, look over here so on the on the in, in initial day the lt is 100 so initially when time t equal to 0 the total complete l not is present on the first day itself that is after 24 hours only 79% of the food is remaining that means 21% of the food is already consumed so if we look at the first day there is here the first day will fall on the first day you will see this is the graph value on the first day this is the graph value so you will see 79% of the food is remaining and 21% of the food is already been consumed okay so this amount of food is remaining and this amount of food is consumed if you look at the first day this these are the values if you look at the fifth day you will see on the fifth day itself only 31% of the food is remaining this is the fifth day that is that that we are talking about on the fifth day 31% of the food is remaining and 68% of the food is consumed so on the fifth day the yt value will be equal to 68% and the uh, lt value will be equal to 31% okay so this is how we calculate or we determine the values of lt and yt we can use the equations that are developed how do you determine the value of uh, so we have got the equation of lt how do you determine the value of yt yt is nothing but yt is nothing but l not minus lt so if we subtract so this completes l not if we subtract lt value from it we'll get what we'll get the value of yt so yt is nothing but l not minus lt l not is l not lt ki equation we know l not e raise to the power minus t kt if we simplify it we get the values of lt we can plot this graph so here this graph has been plotted how the graph has been plotted this graph is plotted versus how um, uh, bod unoxidized versus time this graph can also be plotted with bod oxidized versus time okay so bod oxidized versus this time uh, this time graph can also be plotted and the graph will look something like this okay so the graph will look something like this with time the graph will look something like this and the equation of yt will be this now this yt value is called as the bod value that we have calculated in lab at any time period at any temperature we can calculate the value of bod how much bod is consumed how much oxygen was demanded because the organic matter that is being consumed might have demanded the oxygen so bod value is representing the yt value that we have determined in the laboratories so these are the empirical equations that were developed in the lab to determine the value of yt now the point comes is 
so what what we are seeing is what we are seeing is with the time with the time these bod value or the l not value how they are changing so you, you you look at the 80th day of this table on the 80th day what we are seeing the amount of food remaining is very very less the amount of food that has already been consumed is very very high you look at the 20th day 99% of the food is already been consumed already oxidized so bod value at on 20th day is 99% but we can't perform this test for bod 20 we can't put the sample on for 20 days in an incubator there are various issues that can happen the light can go uh, uh, the the the, elect the electricity problem can occur there are a lot of uh, practical problems that can occur in a laboratory if a test is performed for 20 20 days plus we can't wait for the, that much amount of a time period to get the test results okay so that is why a five day value is taken into consideration there is one more reason why five day bod was taken actually this test was developed in uh, uk london by the uk authorities and it was performed on the thames river and the flow period of thames river is five days the time period it it requires to fall off into an ocean is five days and that is why five day period is also taken into consideration there is one more technical reason okay now let us look at the one last point that is how temperature affects the bod value so how temperature affects the kt value so what is the formula for kt over here so let us look at what kt is okay so after we understand lt and kt let us look at what kt actually means so what happens if the temperature increases if the temperature increases the rate at which microbes are consuming the food or they are oxidizing the organic matter that will increase if the temperature is less their rate of consumption of the uh, organic matter is small or the less we can understand it practically also if we keep a fruit in a deep freezer in a refrigerator it is possible that its life gets extended so we keep lot of fruits and vegetables in deep freezers in cold storage homes so that we want them we don't want them to be, get affected by microbe microbes etc okay so their life increases but if the same fruit is put outside the refrigerator it will start degrading at a very high pace so uh, so you, so you look at how the temperature affects it so for temperature to affect this kt value is very important kt has an empirical formula for it kt the rate at which microbial microbes are degrading the organic matter at any temperature t t is representing the temperature the value has a k20 over here so we know the value of k20 generally it is given in numericals if there are numerical problems in the exam generally k20 value is given it is nothing but 0 0.23 per day it is a known value if i want to calculate the rate the decay rate at any other time at any other temperature if i want to calculate at 30 degrees celsius what will be the rate so what will i do is instead of kt i will write it k30 i know the value of k20 there is nothing but 0 0.23 i will put at 1.047 and t minus 20 i'll write 30 minus 20 when i solve this equation what i will get is 0 0.36 per day if i want to calculate the value of k at 10 degrees celsius what i will do is i'll write k10 again 0 0.23 1.047 instead of t i will write 10 because i have to calculate at 10 degrees celsius and 20 and i will get a value of k10 it will be 0 0.145 per day so that is how the rate at which microbes are consuming the food is changing so if the temperature is high the rate at which microbes will be eating will be very very high and if the temperature is less the rate of consumption decreases okay so if we look at the graphs so can you answer this thing i have plotted the three graphs graph in a purple line graph in a yellow line and a blue line and i have marked three points on a fifth day so on the fifth day there are three points that are marked can you answer which graph represents 20 degrees celsius 30 degrees celsius and 10 degrees celsius so if you can pause and think about it it will be very helpful we can we can very clearly say that uh, this middle graph is a 20 degree celsius graph okay uh, the, the, this why this uh, this way i can help you but you have to answer about 30 degree celsius and 10 degree celsius so i hope you have uh, you have tried to understood it now you'll see on the fifth day itself if the temperature is higher 
माइक्रोबियल मास हैव कंज्यूम द फूड एट अ वेरी हाई रेट सो वेरी लेस मटेरियल विल बी रिमेनिंग सो इन 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 द ब्लू लाइन लेस मटेरियल इज रिमेनिंग ओके ऑन द फिफ्थ डे बट ऑन अ पर्पल ऑन अ पर्पल लाइन वेरी लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ फूड इज रिमेनिंग ऑन द फिफ्थ डे सो एज कंपेयर टू एज कंपेयर टू द ट्वेंटी डिग्री सेल्सियस इन अ ब्लू लाइन लेस अमाउंट ऑफ फूड इज रिमेनिंग बट इन अ पर्पल लाइन लार्जर अमाउंट ऑफ फूड इज रिमेनिंग इफ द लार्जर अमाउंट ऑफ फूड इज रिमेनिंग दैट मीन्स द रेट ऑफ कंजम्पन इज लो है ना द रेट एट विच माइक्रोज आर ऑक्सीडाइजिंग इज लो दैट इज वाई द पर्पल लाइन रिप्रेजेंट्स अ टेन डिग्री सेल्सियस टेम्परेचर ट्वेंटी डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड थर्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस ओके दैट इज हाउ वी कैन डिटरमाइन सो दिस हेल्प्स अंस इन आइडेंटिफाइंग और सॉल्विंग एनी ब्यूटी इक्वेशन एट एनी टेम्परेचर एंड एनी डिग्री सेल्सियस ओके सो इफ आई इफ यू कैन पुट दीज वैल्यूज एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो सी द प्रैक्टिकल वैल्यूज अगेन आई हैव वॉट आई हैव डन इज आई हैव टेकन द वैल्यू ऑफ एल नॉट आई हैव टेकन द वैल्यू ऑफ एल नॉट एज टू बी हंड्रेड एम जी पर लीटर एंड वॉट आई एम सींग वॉट 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 आर द डिफरेंट वैल्यूज एट आई एम ऑप्टेनिंग एट टेन डिग्री ट्वेंटी डिग्री एंड थर्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस सो यू सी इन द फर्स्ट डे इट सेल्फ If the temperature was twenty degree Celsius, seventy nine percent of the food was remaining. But if the temperature was thirty degree Celsius, only sixty nine percent of the food is remaining. Rest amount is consumed. So large amount of food has been consumed if the temperature is thirty degree Celsius. But if we talk about ten degree Celsius, a large amount of food is remaining. So BOD remaining is a very very large quantity. Okay. So on the fifth day also you can see. the values are different so with temperature the the rate at which microbes work is a different okay and if you want to solve any problems any numericals these are the values that we use so i am summarizing some of the formulas what is yt representing yt is representing the amount of bod that has already been oxidized bod that has been exerted or bod after x days how much bod is remaining so when you talk about bod what we are actually talking about is yt second lt is representing amount of bod remaining so it is talking about it is talking about oxidized bod it is talking about unoxidized bod it is talking about exerted bod it is talking about bod remaining or the bod left so these two terms represent different things okay now uh, the kt represents the bod rate constant the bod coefficient the rate constant or reaction rate constant these are the terms by which kt value is known and it is a temperature dependent coefficient and to talk about l not what do we call l not technically l not is nothing but ultimate bod initial bod total bod it is token it is the initial amount of food organic matter that was present that is why it is called as initial bod or ultimate bod or total bod what do we call it time t is time in days and capital t is temperature in degree celsius so these are the different different things that that are used in equation okay with the help of these equations we can determine bod value at any time and at any temperature values so if we want to calculate for example if i want to calculate bod after 10 days at 30 degree celsius if i want to calculate bod at 10 days at 30 degree celsius temperature what i am going to do i am going to write equation like this so what uh, i have since i have to calculate bod i'll be using this equation bod at 10 days 30 degree celsius i will write down the value of l not in place of e i will be writing minus t t is 10 days for me so this is the time uh, the days representing kt ki jagah i will use the temperature k so in in place of t i will use the 30 degree celsius temperature so the graph of 30 degree celsius is here this graph and at 10 degree celsius this value will be obtained from this equation not this value i will obtain this value because this is representing yt this value is representing only lt amount of food remaining so at after 10 days at 30 degree celsius this much amount of bod has already been oxidized and only this much amount of bod is left okay i hope you will be able to understand this questions in a later video what i am going to do is i am going to help you develop uh, i i i will solve certain examples of bod so that it will be very helpful for you to understand or solve the numericals based on the bod some complete questions i'll be taking thank you so much if you like the video please do like share and subscribe the video thank you so much